Hi everybody, it's this is Lillian and I will be talking you through a very large blue Dutch pour that I did the other day. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we need to lay down a lovely layer of white paint. Okay, my white, all, all my paints are mixed one part paint with five parts flow troll and about one to one to two parts water. Okay, the the flow troll we get here in, in Europe is very different to flow trolls in other countries. It's actually a lot thicker, so we do need a little bit extra paint. I mean water. So what you need to do is you need to get a nice smooth surface, preferably nice and even. You don't want any sort of empty areas. You want to have it completely covered and the paint does sort of settle itself down. And then you just need to go and tap and fill in a few places where you can see. Okay, so now I'm going to start laying down my paint. I've chosen some lovely colors of blue, shades of blue. I've got the ultramarine blue that I'm putting down now. Followed by a nice, what I would call a baby blue, a light blue, which I actually have added in a little bit of silver pigment. And then we've got the dark, dark blue with a bit of black added in. I will list all of the colors that I've used in the description. Okay, so I'm just going to sort of stagger the colors. I don't want one being dominating. And I'm going to just not add too much paint because in the past I've always had a bad habit of putting down too much paint and then when I blow it out with the blow dryer it just takes over all the negative space so today I'm going to take a more conservative approach and then rather add on if I need to so I'm just building it up in thin lines because these paints are going to mix quite a lot when you blow through I'm also adding a few drops of cell activator Okay, if you guys know the cell activator is just your regular paint mix mixed with a couple of drops of silicone and I'm going to go over with of course the blowtorch which I like to use with the acrylics more than the heat gun because it really does bring out the bubbles quickly and also can help create the cells and what I like to do is just flood the area around the paint the colors so that it will help the paints flow out from the center when you use the blow dryer. So I'm almost ready now for the hair dryer or the blow dryer. And I'm just adding a few extra bits, which is gonna give it a little bit of extra detail. Yep, over again, just make sure all the air bubbles are out and off we go. Here's the best part, guys. This is the part you hold your breath. Just picking up any little spillage drops there. And I'm going to commence blowing those colors out. Took a very bad angle with the camera today, so I'm going to cut it short a little bit here and there because I don't want to have my big head or my long arm in the way. But that's fine. I'm sure it won't interfere too much. There, there we go, guys. I'm liking it. It's looking really, really stunning. Just go and go over it, getting the air bubbles out, and to bring out a few cells. Okay, so I want the bottom to end on the canvas at the end, like it does on the other opposite side. So I'm adding more paint and I'm going to do another blowout. Okay, so happy with that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some mouth blowing. I don't want such harsh edges and I want to try and extend the whole thing out a bit more. 
I am noticing that some of the areas are a bit light and I did have in mind that this painting to have quite a lot of dark area because that blue that dark blue is going to draw almost a black blue a midnight blue so I'm going to work on this a bit more definitely I also want to bring out the gold in even places across the painting just to help with the composition because it's all very good just putting paint down but you need to have good composition so I'm just going to add a few more intricate little bits and then I'm going to blow them out after the gas the heat gun or rather I should say the blowtorch there we go blowing that out with the hair dryer starting to look better but I know I'm going to want more so there I go with the more dark blue more ultramarine the bad at the base and then I have the lighter colors coming on top and a bit of more of the dark blue and blow that out yeah now it's starting to look more full which is kind of what I was looking for and use the straw to blow these parts out even further I want it to be whimsical at the ends and I carry on at the bottom and through the middle as well and I'm going to go add on to it my extra dark blue I want to balance it like it is more or less on the opposite side the bottom corner starting to look like something I like and keep building it up like I said before in the beginning of the video I don't want to have too much paint on the canvas and then I have, can't get rid of it and then it's a ruined picture so this time I'm taking it very cautious it's a bit more time consuming slowly building it up but I think the result is looking pretty amazing getting into some final details now always go with the blowtorch guys put the paint down before you do anything with it give it a go with the blowtorch get the air bubbles out so you don't spread those bubbles and you end up with too many holes in the artwork I don't mind a little circular hole here and there but I don't like my painting to be covered in them okay we got the old paper straw I'm trying to blow it around see what it's gonna do sometimes it's tricky but that's okay you can always just push it back again yeah sorry about the big head in the way starting to like this this is look, looking more or less complete in terms of how I want the size and composition to be I want some continuance throughout the picture I want it to look like one being yeah it's a little bit backbreaking work guys especially for me very very tall I don't know if you know that I'm actually very very tall but we'll get more into that another time so what I'm doing now is I'm taking the palette knife and I'm dragging through okay so I'm going to drag some of the colors through the other colors just got to be careful like I just did there and made a big mark but it will easily be covered up with a bit of blowing okay so what I'm doing is I'm dragging through colors that so that the contrast with each other so the lighter into the darker or the darker into the lighter and I also want to break up that gold I don't want big solid clumps of gold so I'm going to add in some swirls and twirls and I'm just going to go with the flow of the painting I'm going to be pulling out some thin whiskers you're going to see that soon 
and that for me was just the ultimate highlight of the whole day <laughs> and I really got to say I do love this painting this is a stunning painting and um, anyone who makes anything like this should be very proud of themselves it's taken me a long time to get to this point I've had many many paintings go to waste well not waste them I've always gone over them and done another painting so you can see I'm just pulling out those little whiskers the best part of it I promise you hard work's done now you're just touching around see if you want to add anything or subtract anything really very really satisfying very satisfying yep please guys you must uh, leave me some comments let me know what you think think if I went too far or if I should have stopped before or if you think I should have done more do you like the negative space don't you I'd love to know what you think and we go as you can see I've been doing this for quite a few minutes almost time to say okay enough and there you go let's take a close-up look at this detail guys oh my gosh and there oh, do you see the hidden eye I always seem to have a hidden eye there it is again show up in my artwork many times and there's those awesome whiskers and you can see now the real detail Thank you so much for watching and please do subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thank you. Tail. Look at that gold. The swirls.